Hello once again people, Dragon86 here with another episode of friggin' the DDLC Plus Side Stories. In the last one, uh, we did Natsuki for the first time. Yep, right up here, the respect. And now it's, uh, Sayuri's turn to take on the, the pink devil. So, uh, let's just jump into it. Yes. Mangoes? That's good. While Natsuki is messing with the orientation of her manga on the closet shelves, Sayuri approaches from behind and pulls her into an embrace. What? I. I. The literature club has been full swing since Natsuki joined. Including her, the club is now compromised of four members. Comprised, you dumb butt ass piss. Sayuri, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica. Each club member has received a day in the spotlight to share all of their favorite kinds of literature with each other. Natsuki was first and shared her passion for manga. Then Sairi shared her love for poetry, as well as how she goes about writing it herself. Monica, who has multiple literary interests, decided to focus her day on short stories. And finally, Yuri managed to demonstrate her obsession with fantasy, with a little help and encouragement from Sayori. After the week was spent on the presentations, Monica decided to give the club members this next week to freely explore each other's literary interests. Sayori, having spent most of her time in the club so far with Yuri's fantasy books, is rather excited to begin her journey into Natsuki's manga, manga collection. I want to with you today. Tell me which one I should pick. Uh, well, that depends on the kind of stuff you like. I mean, there's like romance, drama, comedy, mystery. I like all of those things. Sayori reaches out and pulls a random book from the shelf and expects the cover. Shouldn't this girl be wearing more clothes? That's the appeal of the mangoes in anime. You wouldn't like that one. In a panic, Natsuki snatches the book from Sayuri's hand, then replaces it on the shelf in a less conspicuous location. Okay, well, if you really have no preference, then let's just start with something that's easy to get into. A lot of these don't start to get really good until like a few volumes in, and I wouldn't ask someone to make that kind of commitment unless they're already really into mangoes. Ugh. I could handle it. I did it with Yuri's book, at least. Well, I'm more considerate than that. Although I'm kind of impressed by your attention span if you put that much effort into your books. Though I have the especial chat of a donut. But I love my friends and I couldn't do anything if it's for them. Well, okay then. Let's pick you something that even donuts can read. I didn't say I was a donut, I just said I had the attention span of one. Oh, are you just trying to call me sweet? You're so cold. No, how did you get to that conclusion? And don't call me that. A donut? C cute. Oh, how come? I just don't like it. I don't need a reason. Natsuki yanks a book from the shelf and closes the closet doors. If someone asks you to stop, then you just need to stop. People need to realize that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't really didn't mean to hurt you. Nah, sorry, it wasn't you. Natsuki shakes her head while pulling a second chair over to her desk. I was talking about something else. I didn't mean to get angry all of a sudden. Natsuki averts her gaze and mumbles. You're like, well, like a nice person, so I wasn't talking about you. I still learned a valuable lesson. Don't fuck with donuts. Sayuri speaks softly as well, feeling shy after receiving the unexpected compliment. Well, well, anyway. Here's the book, so just start it whenever you feel like it. Well, to the boat. well, it's like a comedy, and there's romance too, obviously, so, you know, romantic comedy. Sorry looks at the title. It's called Love is Another Word for Luck. It's about a girl who keeps accidentally running into the same guy, and then you find out, like... Well, you should just read it. But you have to tell me what you think. I can already guess who you're gonna ship yourself with. Wait, yeah, okay. It'd be so funny if I'm right. Ship? I, I don't get what it is the definition of do I set sail? Ahoy? Hosho Bari Desu? Uh, never mind. Let's not worry about that yet. Just make sure you tell me what you think. Oh, okay. I'll start, bud. Hey, maybe tomorrow we can do poetry too. Oh, um. Yeah, I guess. But don't you want to finish this first? Yeah, but we could do both. I mean, unless you don't like poetry, then I won't make you or anything. No, it's just... Well, never mind. We can worry about it tomorrow. Tomorrow. After the club meeting ends and Natsuki and Yuri leave, Monica strikes up a conversation with Sayori. 
I see you got Natsuki to share some of her manga with you. I really want to become better friends with her. She's so enthusiastic and explosive. I could just listen to her talk. She's so... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if she means I can't say that to her if I just can't say it at all. Say what? Nothing. I am a web of the rest, but... Well, Natsuki is a woman of cute. Of culture. Oh, I said it. <sighs> What's so bad about that? I don't know. Well, you know, there's one thing I'm kind of worried about. Sometimes I'm afraid that Natsuki actually doesn't like me very much. Oh, that's ridiculous. How can you feel that way? Well, I mean, just little signs, like how she only says hi to me after I say hi to her first. It feels like she only gets excited to talk to me when it's about manga and other stuff she likes. She seems, she just seems dismissive a lot. She was like that when I brought up poetry. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she doesn't like you. She's probably just shy, you know? Bob, uh, my, my stupid head is just making me worry for no reason. It likes to do that. It's okay. Try not to worry so much. Everything will be great. But you can always talk to me about any concerns that you have. I'm here to help. Or the bullets. Sarah gives Monica a quick hug. Well, I gotta keep trying because I love her and I want to get closer to her. You got this. Oh wait, I forgot to give Cassette. I am a criminal now for hugging you without the power mission. After the next club meeting starts, Sari is the last one in as usual. Trotting into the room, she sees Natsuki sitting alone by the closet, reading what must be manga. Without hesitation, Sari pulls up a chair and plops herself down right next to Natsuki. Hello there. Hi. What you read it? Uh, could I read it with you? Natsuki pulls the book away from Sayari. You can't just start in the middle. There are spoilers. Besides, what about the one I gave you yesterday? Oh, uh, yeah, it was just colors. Well, anyway, I've been waiting forever for this volume to come out. And it just came out yesterday, so... Oh, that's exciting. Well, I'll let you read it then. Mm -hmm. Can I six deck to you, though? Uh, sure. Sorry, plops herself down to Natsuki, next to Natsuki, and then pulls out a blank sheet of papier. Natsuki reads in silence, save for the periodic flutter of a page being released from beneath her thumb. From Sayori's side, only the light tapping noises of her pen made in the paper can be heard. Take a note. Time passes. Sayori's paper is filled with scribbles and the margins are lined with stick figures. Natsuki lets out a deep sigh and closes her book. Those you'll follow with this? Nah, no, but it's a good stopping point. My head is swimming. I need a break. Natsuki stretches her arms. Aren't you bored? No, I was writing. Oh, I saw all the stick figures and thought you were just bored. I just draw those when I'm thinking of waiting for inspiration. I made friends with them all. This one's sad because she thinks the night sky is pretty, but she can't look up at the stars in public without everyone thinking she's a word, though. And this one has problems with his back, but the doctors can't figure out what's wrong with him. <laughs> what the heck? You're the weirdo. Ought to read the poem about Barker Ode? <laughs> sure, I guess. Sorry, slides the paper over to Natsuki. As Natsuki reads through the poem, she furrows her eyebrows. Hmm. She slides the paper back over to Sayori. Don't you ever feel weird just sharing all of your thoughts and feelings like that? I mean, your poems are, like, really emotional. Is that bad? Well, no, it was just an observation. I think people could get closer to each other if they find ways of expressing their feelings. Well, Natsuki begins to protest, but she can't find a good way of putting her thoughts into words. Doesn't that depend more on the kind of friends you have? I don't know. To each their own, but I've never met anyone I'd feel comfortable sharing my poems with. Not that it's you, it's just how I am, so... You're a bulbs. Didn't she say that earlier? She writes things? You never told me that. I just thought you wrote other stuff. Yeah, that too, but... You should... No. <laughs> uh, I mean, would you ever want to share? Like I said, I don't do that. But... Can we talk about something else? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It just makes me uncomfortable. I can't help it. Still, I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, let's move on to something that makes us both happy. I should tell you the book you gave me since I didn't get very far yet. Sure. Read, read, read the mangoes. Over the next few days, Sari begins each club meeting by approaching Natsuki with unwavering enthusiasm. 
Let's go. Let's go. Alright, let's go. At the end of one club meeting, Monica, who has become rather invested in Cyrus' friendship mission, starts an innocuous conversation with Natsuki while she packs up. It's cool that you've been finding time to spend with Sayuri. She's pretty excited for the chance to read manga with you. Yeah. I'm sure you've been enjoying the chance to share it too, right? Yeah, mostly. Hmm? Natsuki glances over her shoulder, but doesn't reply further. What's on your mind? Nothing. I don't talk about people behind their backs. Oh. Natsuki falls silent, but she just fidgets instead of getting back to what she was doing, as though she wants to say more. It's okay to share your feelings. That's different from talking about someone behind their back. I guess. I just hate when people talk about me behind my back, so I'm better than to do it so I'm better than to do it to others. Reading English. Monica shares a bright smile. You're really considerate. Um Thanks, I guess, but it doesn't feel like it. You can trust me. Natsuki scans the better stands in silence for a moment, still fidgeting. I just feel smothered sometimes. I'm not used to someone being like all over me right after we met. I mean it's fun to hang out with her, but I just have no control over the pace. I can't just meet someone and instantly become best friends with them and like share everything about myself. That's not how it works. I just want to chill out sometimes. Oh, I didn't realize that was happening. It's fine. Why would you, why would you have, I guess? Huh? I know, I just feel bad about it. I know Sayori, so I should have realized. Monica navigates through her tinge of guilt, which has surfaced mainly due to her being the one who previously encouraged Sayori's behavior. Despite not knowing the situation, that's the sound of the garbage truck out there taking the garbage out, because it's trash day. Uh, despite not knowing the situation, Monica can't help but feel a little responsible. Do you want me to talk to her about it? Nah, I wouldn't like that. Well, I could... I don't know. I could, like, divert her into another club activity for you or something. No way. That would be so underhanded. And mean. Sorry, I didn't think that one through. Besides, just because I complain about it doesn't mean I'm asking for someone to solve my problems for me. True. I'm sorry. I guess I just instinctively want to try to solve problems, even if I haven't been invited to. It's fine. I would talk to Sayuri about it, but it would make things really weird between us. I feel like it would make her just constantly be afraid that she's bothering me. I don't know how to just keep things natural. Well, I think if you do a good job expressing all your feelings, she would totally understand. Sayuri really wants to be the best she can be for other people. I think she would actually be happy that you want to improve your friendship with her. Maybe. Uh, it just feels so dumb, talking to someone about how to be friends with them. It's just weird and not cool. Monica shrugs. It's the literature club. Then she mumbles through a stifled laugh. It's not the cool club. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry, that just tickled me for some reason. Look, I know that you're kind of in a tough spot and that it's hard for you to really express yourself, but you've really demonstrated to me that you're great at self-reflection and critical thinking, even if it doesn't feel like it to you. I think that's the most important part of being able to navigate through these things, so I believe that you'll find the right thing to do. Well, Natsuki instinctively starts to reject the compliment, but she can't find any excuse to do so. Thanks. Natsuki gathers her things, and she finishes her thought. Yeah, her thought in a mumble. I'm still glad I joined the club, even if it's weird sometimes. Monica smiles, but Natsuki turns her back and walks away before waiting for a reply. It was an unusual day for Natsuki to express her appreciation, but Monica knew what she meant. It made Monica feel like everything really was going to be okay. Next day, or is it the end of the... Oh, okay, so it's the end of that thing. Oh, we got a new mail, but... As I said before, I'm just gonna do it at the end. How much time has passed? 14 minutes. Okay, interesting. That was pretty quick. Maybe it's just me being super speed boy. Gasoline's burning. Uh, what do we got? It's lunchtime. Sayori, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Sayori's impeccable skill of zoning out. I'm stretching. 
However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl. Hey, that's his old school. I never run into the other club members throughout the school. Old school, eh? Sari so stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki, who's busy walking and chatting with her friends, doesn't notice Sari at first. Then she glances over in Sari's direction. Sari waves enthusiastically. Get away from me! Following her friends, Natsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Hey! She definitely saw me. Monica is the first to arrive to the club meeting, then Natsuki. Sorry, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. Natsuki's been so desperate, but I was stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. She only got excited because she got to share a burger. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Um, sorry, but do you plan on going inside? No. Why? I'm sulking. Oh. Okay, then. Stay out here, then. Well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me. Uh oh. I'll stay here, then. I don't want to go in. I'm afraid of bothering no skr. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her, but instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Huh? Oh. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. That was, that was a joke. It just sounded like something stupid. Wait, it sounded like something stupid that I would do from anxiety? Sounds like something stupid. It probably That's probably what it was supposed to be, unless I'm just being illiterate and dumb, but... From Exoder? Well, I just don't like attention being drawn to myself. Oh. Well, that makes sense based on the person you are. But Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. But it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more instead of getting closer. It makes me feel like she was only spending time with me during the club because I was reading Boga. But she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um. Well, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? Oh, she was just walking with our friends. With her friends. Yuri pauses for a moment. How do I put this? Sorry, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. Of course, I don't think there's anything more important than both. I mean, the best part of my day was with my food. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... You hate being alone? Sorry nods. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I think... Well, if I was trying to have alone time, and it was being threatened with an interruption, then... It just would not make me very happy. Yeah, but that doesn't have to do with Natsuki. She was already with her friends. I tried to be a loner out of Vogue. No, I think it's similar. It's... Well, we're all friends in the club. But we have our own lives outside of the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to intertwine with... Oh, wait, what? Intertwine your lives together. But the capacity at which each person is ready to do that might be different. There are friends who just like to have fun together, and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. I think when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort levels of the other person. I mean, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside of the club. It could be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace, rather than jump headfirst into a new commitment. But... That means I really was bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurt at her? I... Don't know. I'm sorry. My insight was really only based on what I understand about my own needs. And Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even if all that is true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki because she always seems really total. I just took a toll of everything instead of looking for the right balance. Now I heard her and she doesn't want to talk about her. 
Oh, could I let myself do it? Um, sorry. I think that... Well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki doesn't harbor any ill feelings towards you. So I think if we were to realistically consider the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um, I'm bad at this. I'm sorry. You're a lot better than me at things like comforting and reassuring people. Suddenly, Sari gives Yuri a gentle hug. God damn it, what did I tell you about? Uh, you're the best. Uh, I'm sorry for burning you with this. You're trying so hard for me. You're such a smooth heart. I just. It's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others. And my friends deserve happiness. Sari beams! Well. Oh, wait, that was his. I was like, I'm gonna come down to get you some spellers. She should do what she wants. And if she does still want to be friends, then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's what boss. I wish I didn't feel so awful to build her. It makes me feel desperate. Like I need to make it up to her by trying to make her her but... but that's not what she needs. I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it means I still need a girl. I really want to grow the birds. And if it's me better than my friends, I won't die. That's very mature of you, Sari. <laughs> Sari hops up and down on her toes. So, does that mean you'll be going home after all? Sari shakes her head. I need to be here to show her that I respect her spurs. I'll just play the club by myself to die. Yuri nods in understanding. You could go in first. Okay. Hmm. You're blocking the door. <laughs> Sari steps aside. By the way, before you enter the club room, Sari interjects. You said that you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't really think that's true. I think you're actually really similar to Lord the Mars. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Sari, that's absurd. You're very silly sometimes. Yuri turns and enters the club room. After a moment, Sari follows. Hello, what is going on? I'm going to hug everyone in sight. The club room is quiet. When Sari walks in, Natsuki glances in her direction. Sari smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Sari decides it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she pulls it out. However, it looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. Ooh, are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice, unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room. She kneels down at Natsuki's desk. Hey! Natsuki pulls the sheet closer to her and covers it with her arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Whatever. I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayuri, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze? I think she's mad at me. How come? I'm I'm busy right now. Ask me later. Monica falls silent. Natsuki looks back down at her paper. She inches her hand away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see. Title? Oh, it says to Sayori. Understanding, Monica smiles. She places a hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly. I'm proud of you. Ugh. Natsuki looks away, but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Natsuki's shoulder a quick squeeze before standing back up and pulling away. What is the Luther going to say? The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed. So is Monica after checking on Sayori and Natsuki to ensure they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying late for an unknown reason, a silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing the volume, Sayori brings it to the closet to put away. She slides it back onto the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then, Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in order, oh wait, in order to return it to its proper location. So, I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall silent again, avoiding eye contact. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. 
about. I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow. Mm. Sorry turns around to hide her pained expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof Natsuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. <laughs> Defeated, Sari carries herself out of the club room. Once in the hallway, Sari takes a deep breath and hits her palm against her cheeks to clear her head a little. Uh, um, suddenly Natsuki's stammering voice, Natsuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Natsuki? Startled, Sari turns back around to face Natsuki. Yay, CG time. There's a, there's, I see the, sorry, there's a, a wing in the background. The, the blur. Natsuki fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. <clears throat> I have a lot of things to say. Beto. Uh, you go first. Natsuki bites her lip and can't stay still. <coughs> oh. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Trying to force the words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down a little. Uh, I'm sorry for the thing I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just being kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to like. I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable. Especially when it comes to like, like, feelings and stuff. So, face burning, Natsuki clams up again. Instead of continuing, she simply holds up a sheet of paper for Sayori to take. Oh, and I actually get to read the poem. Cool. The best place in the world. I love my bedroom. It's full of bright colors and soft things. Sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, my memories. All of my dreams were born in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, all my failures, my fears, my feelings. <laughs> Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch, but it's still the best place in the world. But when someone knocks, I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinges. Please don't break. Don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture, and I peek through the keyhole, and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. I wonder if this is, uh... Huh, I wonder if this is like, uh, what's going on at home. The knocking won't stop, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think I read that part already, but I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put them away, to see them again. I have so much to do when I'm scared. I'm not ready, but it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually open the door. And I'll show you the best place in the world. Uh, it's a blurb. But I thought... Well, I s sucked it up so that I could work things out with you. So just... Just be happy about it. Please. Sorry smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happy that I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club made it in the game that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted. And that we probably have different ways we like to make friends. Um, about like, the friendship stuff. I mean, it's okay. I understand, so you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your pub did a good job. So don't force yourself if you don't read it yet. Natsuki nods. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and wanted to give you space. I was thinking it's silly that I just approached you all the time and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you comfortable. I respect that from now on. Friendships should always start with those things. With the right balance. Natsuki nods again. One thing about that, but well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced, like you said. Sorry, nods. Uh, just uh, well, mate. Oh, uh, sure, that the other though. Classroom time or next day, actually? Oh, uh, never mind. Well, anyway, now that the two of them have found common ground, Natsuki finds it easier to speak more freely again. I'm not going to be, like, sharing my poems all the time now or anything like that. But, 
I guess it wouldn't hurt to do once in a while. Only the best ones. So you better like them, because otherwise I might change my mind. Oh, they got a thing to do now, Clue. I... I was just saying. Oh, Paulo, I have to tell you about my new buffalo. Ha <laughs> oh, nani? Oh, from the manga. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, I need to guess who it is. You're definitely Bobby over the glass. The two walked down the hallway together. Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Darn, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Oh, you wanted to enjoy it with the... That's so cute. Oh, shush. Is that the end? It is the end. Okay, cool. Alright, so we got these. Check them out. Uh, ethics. Wait a minute, wasn't there a... Okay, never mind. Because it was a response, so I thought that there was another thing. Uh, simply put, it's not our job to arbitrarily decide upon some code of ethics just because we're the first ones to do this, to our knowledge. That's the government's job to figure out, long after we've made enough headway for it to no longer apply to us. It's fundamentally flawed to apply ethical reasoning to this anyway, because humanity's code of ethics is based upon nothing more than our knowledge and understanding of life forms similar to ourselves. We don't have ethics for killing bacteria or plants, only for the creatures that we can convincingly project our emotions onto. Yeah? The humans in our VMs operate completely differently from us on a fundamental level, and therefore should not be taken any more seriously than a machine that's programmed to print I feel sad. We're engineers, not philosophers. Okay. Pictures. Hello. Oh, this is a uh, side story balance. I think this is what's on the back of the artwork box. Or the Whatever. Hello. Nowski, taking selfie. Finish the side story balance too. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, is that everything? But we're still missing this one right here. Ah. Interesting. All right. Uh, poems? Hello. Oh, yeah, that's the best place in the world. Just ran that. Hello. Uh, a poem from Natsuki distributed at special events in the past. Acquire all of Natsuki's other poems. I named my pen the Expression Express. My feelings aboard with a ticket to you. No room for stammers, no lies, no extra stops, no compromise. Stations screaming by. Attendance staying high. One ticket to you, please and thank you. Take a headphone and doze, no bumps in the rails, just thumps in my heart and loops in my letters, and clouds in the sky and dreams in your eyes. Hey, wake up. The train has arrived. Expression Express. Destination you. Choo choo! How cute. Uh, hello. Seen from the side story balance. Yes, flustered this time. Uh, anything else here? No? Oh, okay. Alright. Musica. I don't know what's new, so I'm just going to scroll all the way down so it makes it look like I looked. Alright, cool. Well, that's, uh, how many are we done already? Okay, one, two, three, four. Alright, just two more left. And then we'll be done with the whole thing, Maliga Jig. Cool. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe too if you want. And until then, this is Dorkin86, signing off. Wow, 33 and a half minutes.